All right, real quickly today, we're going to uh, go back to lesson 1.4, and we're going to look at example number two. All right, now we learned yesterday when dealing with absolute value problems, we are supposed to write how many equations? Two. Two, all right, and that has not changed for today, all right? Today, we're going to do the exact same thing, but what looks different today is that in example two, we don't just have an absolute value symbol on one side of the equal sign. We have an absolute value symbol on both sides of the equal sign. All right. The good news is, though, that our first equation is not really any different than it was, uh, for example, one. For the first equation, we're simply going to drop off the absolute value symbols. But the one thing that is different is we want to make sure that when there's an absolute value symbol on both sides of the equal sign, that when we drop off the absolute value bars, we replace them with parentheses, all right? And there's a reason for that. It's not really gonna show up in this problem, but it will show up in the second problem, all right? But we're gonna go ahead and just get in the habit because there's gonna be occasions where outside of your absolute value bars, you might have a number. And what are we supposed to do with numbers and absolute value bars when there's nothing between them? What operation is that? Multiplication. So if we, drop, if we drop off the absolute value bars um, and we don't put the parentheses, then we're going to end up with something that's very, very confusing. All right? So for these particular problems, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to drop the absolute value bars, but we're going to put the uh, absolute value parts in parentheses. And we wrote that note. Put both absolute value parts in parentheses. Now, for this particular problem, there's nothing for us to do other than to solve the problem. So, how are we going to solve for x? What are we going to do first? Subtract the 2x. All right, we're always trying to move our variable to the left side, and for this particular problem, we can do that. Now, 2x minus 2x is 0. We are looking at something that we haven't encountered yet this year, but when I have a variable all by itself, what is the understood coefficient of that variable? One. One. So keep that in mind as you're trying to work this problem out. We've got two. What is x minus 2x? Negative 1x. All right, good. And then, of course, we bring down the rest of the problem. How do we uh, finish solving this problem? Two. We're going to subtract 2 from both sides. So we have negative 1x equals... Good, one minus two, signs are different, is negative one. And then what is our last step? Divide by negative one. Divide both sides by negative one. So x equals? One. Positive one, good. Now that's our first equation. So really nothing has changed, except when we drop off the absolute value bars, we're gonna put uh, those parts in parentheses just in case we have to do the distributive property. Now watch what happens in our second equation. So for the second equation, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start by dropping the absolute value symbols, but let's go ahead and put the absolute value parts in parentheses. Now here's why. You remember with the second equation, we are supposed to change the sign of the what? Look back at your notes if you have to, but for equation two, we're supposed to drop the absolute value bars and change the sign of the answer. answer. The answer is always on the right side of the problem. So we have to do that. The problem is our answer is a binomial. All right. Yesterday our answers were trinomials, one term. Today they're binomials. So we still have to change the sign of the answer. So right in front of your parentheses you're going to insert that minus sign or that negative sign because we've got to change the sign of the answer. But listen, it's sitting outside of a set of parentheses, which means there's an understood what right there? One. And we're going to have to do what with that negative one? Distribute. 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 All right, very good, guys. So let's go ahead. On the left side, there's nothing really to do, so we can bring it down, and we don't need the parentheses anymore. When we distribute negative one, what do we get? Negative 2x minus 1. All right, Olivia, what would we do next? Good, we're trying to move the variable, so we're going to add 2x to both sides. So, Olivia, what is x plus 2x? Nope, remember the understood 
right, there's an understood one right there, so it's 3x. And it equals? Olivia? Negative 1. Awesome. All right, Haley, what would we do to finish this? All right, if I do that, though, if I move the 1 over, am I leaving anything on the right side of the problem? Okay, good. We're going to subtract 2 from both sides. So we have 3x equals? Haley, Haley, what's negative 1 minus 2? Look at your signs. Are they the same or different? So we do what if the signs are the same? Add and keep. So what does that give us? Add and keep. You added, but now you got to keep. What's the sign we're going to keep? Yeah. Oh, negative. negative. Good. And then lastly, Haley? Uh, divide Good. Divide both sides by 3. So x equals? Class? Negative 1. Negative 1. Very good. Now remember, with all absolute value problems, we have to plug them in. Just because we found the answer doesn't mean it is an actual answer. If we plug it in and it does not make a true statement, we cross it out. It's not one of our answers. So when you get your worksheet here in a couple of minutes, make sure every answer has to be plugged in. All right, so let's plug in a one. What is two plus one? Class? Three. What's the absolute value of three? Three. Okay, what is two times one? One. Two. Two plus one? Three. The absolute value of three? Three. Does 3 equal 3? Yes. Awesome. Now let's plug in a negative 1. What's 2 minus 1? One? 1. What's the absolute value of 1? One? 1. What is 2 times negative 1? One? Negative 2. And negative 2 plus 1? One. Negative 1. And the absolute value of negative 1? One? 1. Does 1 equal 1? Yes. Then both of our answers are going to stay. They are both solutions to the problem. So that is the end of... A, Lesson 1.4.